on our next episode of Roofing and Right with Dave and Wally. I'm Wally. I'm you Dave. You are Dave. Dave, Dave, the fun one. So you guys can see we got some work going on in the background here. So we're going to kind of talk about what you basically got to do to start this job. Correct. What do you got to do anytime before you go into any building this like this? This is true. You so, come inside and look for skylights. Yeah, because who knows? I think you might not be able to see them from the top. No, not on this one. You couldn't. No, because of the way it's the coating up there. Yeah. But we actually walked this, didn't see anything. They have the actual skylights in the walls. That's nice. Now, you know, we do coatings. Right. So my first thought of building like this, man, we could coat this. It'd be a pretty nice coating job. Somebody's coated this and tar and, I mean, over the years. I mean, again, you could coat it. There's a lot of prep work involved with this. Oh. That's the whole thing of coatings. It is. And this being coated so many times, the more times it's coated, the more prep you need. Exactly. If this were bare, like the metal inside, we have oh, here. It's beautiful. Oh, that would that certainly be the uh, first thing I would do is coat. Yeah, so I suggest them, you know, we have an option doing a, met, a metal retrofit. You would have to do that because the pull test on this, we didn't meet spec. Right. For, I think this for, is a 20. 24, 26 yeah. gauge metal. Yeah. So you're not going to get railroad pulls. So you're not going to be able to put a traditional mechanical on it. Exactly. Yeah. So what do we have to do with this type of system, Dave? We have to do a purlin attachment. You can do rhino or you can do mechanical, but you have to attach to the purlins. And in this case, are what, five foot on center? They're five foot apart. Yeah, five yeah. foot on center. There may be some contractors out there who have never done this and are just a little... Intimidated, maybe? Yeah, that's a great word. A little queasy? Yeah. Queasy is very good, yeah. But basically, it's just like another roof, okay? I mean, you have attachments. You have attachment points, which are in the purlins. Right. You have a fastener for the purlins. And you have your wood blocking. You have your flashings. So don't be intimidated, queasy, as you should say, uh, about doing one of these. It's the same basic principle yeah. as a regular mechanical attachment. So the only thing you really got to concentrate and get your, your word out because you got to have something to nail the metal to or screw it to it. Oh, maybe. absolutely. Yeah. Yes. So what we're going to start out with today is doing the nailer along the edge of the roof. Yeah. And on this particular building, the roof panels hangs over the edge. Yeah, I think it's like four or five inches, something right. like that. So there's a lot of different ways to go about doing this. There you go. We could have cut that off. A lot of work. Miserable. Yeah, uh, it'd be tough to get a nice straight cut because you got to snap a chalk line and trying to go in between and kind of eyeballing it. When you're going up and down too, yeah. which is a pain. The other thing you could also, so we left it long. Mm -hmm. You can facilitate maybe that building owner, maybe you want to put a gutter down the road. So what we did in between this rib is nine and a half inches. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So we took a two by 10, which is nine, nine and, and a half, half, nine and a half inches wide. We cut it down to nine inches. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're not removing that edge. There's a purlin out there. There's purlin fasteners that oh. stick up maybe a half inch. And if you're trying to remove those, I mean, you're going to break them off. You're going to break them off. You're, you're going to strip, strip them, them out. Yeah. A uh, flat bar, you're going to bend the metal, and then it could screw up your edge. So right. we opted to leave those in. Right. So the problem is, if we use just a regular 2x10, you got those two screws on the purlin inside the bottom of the flute. This is going to tend to rock when you're mm -hmm. trying to install it. So what we did, we took a piece of half-inch plywood and anchored it to the bottom side. It's gonna miss those screws, so this is gonna fit in there nice and so neat. So it's gonna span the screws. And this is gonna fit in there nice and flush. And it's gonna raise it above. And it's gonna match up perfect with our flute fit. Okay. This is one option. Okay. What, uh, you have two different pieces of wood there. Yeah, we have a straight cut and we have a beveled cut. Mm -hmm. Again, however you wanna do it. Right, it's um, just an option. Yeah, if you don't wanna remove those screws, you're still gonna have to put some type of half inch, could be an inch. Yeah, you never know. It's, yeah, it's went, custom you, to every building. Yeah, and the other reason why we went we wanted the straight cut because somewhere you know down the road some of these edges and then the middles got damaged, mm -hmm. and this is not going to fit quite mm -hmm. as nice. It's going to sit a little high. This is about a, between a quarter and a half inch shorter than the width of that. Mm -hmm. So wherever it's it's not going to fit exactly, it allow us it's it going to fit in there. Yeah, it's going to kind of float if you will. It's going to be screwed down. It's not going to go. Oh anywhere. no no no! You're going to screw it down on the on, the, on the deck side. Yeah, on the purlin side. Right. The other option you can get a metal insulation stop. Right. This is going to sit at the edge of your roof. Your insulation is going to kind of go in here like this. I mean, that's a that's a great, great fix. Yeah. But you still got to remove those screws. Exactly. And you got to pre-drill these, and then your nail is going to go on top for your for your for your whatever metal edge you're going to put on. Right. Now, there's a lot of different ways to do float fill. There's different materials you can use. Correct. Correct. You can use ISO, you could use EPS. XPS. And then come back. So the flute fill basically is going to fill in between the ribs. Right. Whatever that dimension is. You can get a bevel cut, mm -hmm. you can get a square cut. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So on this job, we are using a square cut. Correct. I mean, it's not going to fit as tight as this because no. this is a beautiful fit. Oh, yeah. But the building owners, not that worried about insulation. It's a machine shed. 
okay? This is true. He just wanted the leaks to stop in his roof. Right. So to expedite the process, how you like that one? That's yeah. a great word. Wow. So we just went with a square cut. Mm -hmm. So basically this stuff is nine inches wide, eight foot long pieces. Mm -hmm. So guys are gonna lay in the, the in between the flute with the flute fill, and then we're gonna come back with a cover board. Correct. Now you wanna talk about different cover board. You have different cover boards. Right. It depends on what you need for your R value. Do you wanna go with a cementitious board like a dens deck? Depending of course on the spacing of how wide the rib is, is it? The span? Yeah, the span, is it vertical, is it like this? If it's really wide, you might want to go with the bevel cut because that bring that narrows your gap, which means you don't have to use thick insulation. Well, that something else to you? think about too is what type of system. If you're doing a rhino bond, you need to have a certain thickness. You have to be at least one inch over. Because otherwise that machine is going to sense that deck. Yeah, it's going to think it's one big plate. Yeah. Yep. So basically what we're doing here, we're doing with a two inch flute fill mm -hmm. and we're going to put an inch and a half board across the top. the top to level everything out. Perfect. Perfect. I'm Dave. And I'm Wally. Check out our videos at gif.com slash roofing it right.